then we can proceed to the fine tuning. It is not going to happen overnight. It's but, going to take a while. But by by setting up your Texas school assembly to occur after the election, yeah. and you started saying this close to a year ago, yeah. haven't you just created a political position where you don't have to discuss the nitty-gritty no. of education until after the vote? Well, if I sat here and discussed the nitty-gritty of education, uh, you'd be dozing in your chair. Uh, I wanted to get across what I felt was the number one issue facing Texas and the number one way to solve it is to include the educators in the decision making. It is a dramatic departure from well, anything we've done in the past. You're right. Obviously, the nitty gritty could, right. could go on forever. One of your commercials says, both for Ann Richards, she has new ideas for education. Right. Name three new ideas. Well, I don't let's know begin. Any new ideas. Let's begin with including the educators in the decision making. That's certainly a new idea. Uh, the second one is uh, pulling all of them together in an assembly have right, a meeting, have that a meeting we are later, going that's to. That's a new idea. No, it is a brand new idea. We haven't done anything like that uh, in the state of Texas. We've had a very limited elite group of people who met at a table and passed down onto the educators what needed to be done. Couldn't you have had that meeting a year ago and then the have some specific with, ideas? Of uh, having wait. students involved. Okay, well, I, I didn't mean it because you are. That's one. Uh, you asked for three. Uh, no, I'll wait on number two. Uh, you have, you have anything? I'm not sure those are new ideas. Well, maybe the meeting is a new idea, but it's a meeting. Name one of the okay. new Let's education begin. ideas. Right. The Clayton other... Williams has proposed vouchers. I don't, you don't need to talk about vouchers. But Clayton Williams has well, proposed vouchers. Well, I think vouchers. we ought to. Wait, you may disagree with vouchers, but I at least it's a new to. idea. Name a new idea that you have. Let's begin with the second one, and that is we're going to do a ranking of the schools, and we're going to do that through an audit to determine what the schools in Texas do well and where they have areas in which they are not doing well. Uh, they have a system in Mississippi that I've talked about. You've heard me talk about that, Wayne, mm -hmm. in which we allow our schools to succeed. We promote and try to move those areas in which they're not doing well. I think the third idea is to take programs that are really terrific in Texas, and we have some that are nationally recognized as being outstanding, and take those programs and transfer them to schools that have a like population that have like needs, have like interests, and see if we can emulate those programs in those other schools. And I can name a lot of those programs, and I've seen them in place by visiting those schools. Defy It is a fabulous drug program that is going on in a small town in Northeast Texas. Uh, we have seen a really wonderful bilingual program that is going on in Pasadena, Texas. I've seen a fantastic program that includes outreach into the community and getting parents and discipline involved in the school that is going on in Corpus Christi and one that's still going on in Houston. We need to take those programs and take them and transfer them into schools of a like situation. When you talk about uh, local control, in a way those programs already reflect some local control because you Absolutely. have, but you have, excuse me, you have um, school districts applying certain programs within their school that's districts. Right. You have them already reaching out to, to parents and trying to get them more involved. So again, yeah. as Wayne mentioned, what's, what's the new idea? If you have oh, the these new programs idea already happening. We become the coordinator of those programs and offer them to other places. You see, I think the local control is tremendously important because it allows ownership of the program. But there are a lot of schools who feel isolated, who don't know that this program or that program is going on in other school districts in the state giving us an opportunity at the state level to offer those programs to them. Do you think some school districts should be consolidated? No, I don't think you can do it. And I'm not sure that it offers you anything, Bob Ray. If you consolidate the schools, uh, you haven't done anything as far as innovation or improvement of programs. You have simply consolidated for the expediency of finance. Yeah, I, I don't want to beat this horse to death, but uh, you said overnight a minute ago. We can't solve this overnight. That's right. I mean, there are many of us, I think, who've known since at least 1972 that we have a crisis in education in the state. We've been looking at it year after year. We've seen legislators deal with it year after year. This is not new. I mean, wh why, why do we have to wait? I mean, who's, what's the study? now i mean it's, it's i don't not, think we should study anything anymore you said the blue ribbon committees and things like that yeah I, I don't think we need that anymore i think we need to listen to the educators say this is what is working in our schools and this is what is not doesn't have anything to do with study how does that speak to equalization in some of these small school districts oh now equalization 
the financial situation is the bottom line. And I think that that is where we must begin. You've got to take that court decision or otherwise you're going to turn the schools over to the courts. And I think we're much closer to doing that than anyone dreams. Let me, uh, let me shift gears for a minute and ask you about something else, and that's the issue of abortion. Yes. Um, a teenage girl has to get her parents' permission when she goes on a field trip. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't she have to get her parents' permission to get an abortion? The problem is, Wayne, we all agree that no matter how old the person is who's involved, teenagers or mid-twenties or thirties, you would hope very much that their family is going to be involved in a decision like this. The problem is, and it always develops in writing legislation, is what do you do when there's the exception? What do you do when there's incest? How do you legislate that permission when the circumstances are such that it would truly be harmful uh, to the person, regardless of their age, so that then they are going to seek out back alley butchers, as we saw uh, in this state uh, not too many years ago. That's tough, and it's, there's no question that's a tough issue, yeah. and it's one of a number of tough issues you're going to have to deal with where there are no easy answers as governor. That's right. If you're governor, the legislature sends you a bill. Right. The bill says that teenage girls have to get their parents' permission before getting an abortion. Do you sign or do you veto that bill? What else does the bill say, Wayne? That's does the it's bill... Let's say no, but see, that's... I'm sorry. You can't stop there. Because I've read those bills. What those bills say is when the parents are not there, or if it is a case of incest, then this uh, person must, the go, must go before a judge. And then if the judge decides that she is not mature enough to make this decision on her own, then she must bear a child. Uh, if he decides that she is mature enough to make the decision, uh, then she can decide to terminate the pregnancy. Uh, so it is the exception. Bill. It is the exception that is the problem for me. I don't believe that you can legislate the right to the legislature, to the governor, to judges, to anyone to make that decision. Then you would veto. I'm unclear where you are. Then you would veto the bill. I have not seen a leg. I have not seen a bill limiting the opportunity for termination of a pregnancy in a way that, that I would sign. Okay. Well, let, let's get to, I mean, your philosophy overall, Ms. Richards. I mean, I've seen these ads and heard these ads on the radio that talks about your contribution from the Hollywood women, for example, and you're, you know, that basically saying that you're a liberal. Yeah. You are, aren't you? I think it depends on the issue. When it comes to spending money, I'm pretty conservative. When it comes to educating children, I'm a liberal. If you ask me, how do I feel about reform of the insurance industry? I think government very definitely has a role. Uh, I don't know what you call that. You call that liberal, you call it conservative. I call it protecting the public. If you ask me about crime, as a member of the most victimized group of people, and that is women, I believe that criminals who uh, commit violent acts and are sentenced ought to serve their full time. I don't think they ought to be out on the street victimizing us again. You call that liberal or conservative? I call it common sense. What do you call the death penalty? Is that liberal or conservative? Well, I don't know. You, you favor it. It is the law of the land. Uh, uh, I'm going to carry it out. I think it is tough. I think that there are crimes in this state where you have to be tough. Okay, so you are, and you don't know if that's a liberal or conservative stand, but it seems to me that... It doesn't it, really seem to me it makes much difference. You need, in the 1990s, to look at each one of the issues and say to yourself, where do I stand? And not try to fix it into some philosophical box. Well, I, I guess my, my real point is there are some people who thought that uh, you have moved a little bit closer, I mean, maybe even compromised some of your own views. I mean, you're strong on the death penalty, you show up at, at, a, at a hunt, you know, with a gun so that people can see that you, you, you like to have a gun in your hand and that kind of stuff. And I was, I was wondering, is, is that you trying to out Bubba what some people call the Bubba, or is that you simply saying that uh, you, you do Well, if you're referring to Clayton Williams is the Bubba, I am not trying to out Bubba him. Okay. Uh, the hunt started out as a fun thing uh, and then turned into 
uh, an awful lot of press. Uh, I had a good time. I would have had a better time, I think, if uh, it had been what it was originally intentioned to be. In talking about uh, about crime, uh, we hear your opponent talking about 60,000 new beds, but you're talking about 1,800, given the... No, the I'm sorry. Uh, I've never put out a um, number of beds. I've already approved as treasurer the construction of 23,000 beds. But what about In fact, governor? I'm the only one... I'm the only one in this race who has ever approved more prison beds. I think the question is what kind of beds you're going to build. We're going to build more beds. Are you going to build a very expensive maximum security kind of beds? Or are we going to get smart about crime? And are we going to find a cheaper and better way in which to punish prisoners? Uh, there are many alternatives, most of those you know. And we are finding that if we build those less expensive beds, uh, we can keep them housed, we can keep them locked up, and it costs us less money. So I think, yes, we're going to build the beds, but the question is what time? Well, I was going to ask a question a second ago when we were talking about the liberal conservative values. One of the things that the Republican Party has hit you with this year is a uh, radio commercial that links you to the support of gay rights groups. Yeah. And I was just wondering, as governor, could you support legislation that would prohibit discrimination against uh, uh, homosexual and lesbian people? Oh, fundamentally, I don't believe that uh, we should have uh, discrimination in this country. And I've always thought that uh, the government has no role in being involved in the private lives of individuals. I don't know whether that's liberal or conservative, Bob Ray. Uh, I don't think Big Brother uh, has any business in interfering at all in, in private lives. I think that the Republican Party has tried very, very hard to hit every hot emotional uh, button that they could. Uh, Clayton Williams told me personally that he approved the copy for all of those uh, radio ads. So I have to assume that, that uh, he thinks they're a good idea. I think it's time, though, that we really concentrate on what's important in most of the lives of Texas. And that is, how well am I going to be cared for as an old person? How well are my kids going to be educated? Are we going to attract business to this state and move Texas ahead uh, economically? Uh, are we going to do something about insurance rates? And are we going to keep this state clean? Are we going to stop polluting it and poisoning it? Let me ask another question, which is neither lifestyle or, or, uh, or political philosophy mm -hmm. nor um, anything to do with that ad. And that's the gender gap issue. If you're elected, you'll be the first woman elected in her own right in Texas history, elected as governor. Mm -hmm. Should a woman vote for you in Texas because you're a woman? No. Of course not. Uh, who are, we, we see newspaper stories, I, I've read them, in parts of Texas where women are saying, I'm not going to vote for her. I don't like her. I'm not going to vote for her. Who are those women? Women have an opportunity to have a woman as chief executive of the state and yet they don't want to vote for you. Define that person for me. Well, I'm not sure that I can, except to say that women are no different from men. We don't vote for people just because of their gender, uh, either for them or against them. We all have our specific philosophies and our specific attitudes, uh, and our gender is not uh, the, the, number, the number one thing. I think there will be some women who will vote for me uh, because they hope that I will open doors for women, uh, that other young women, young girls in school now, will see me as governor and say, if she can do that, well, I can do that too, that it sets, uh, it sets a different tone for young people. Uh, but by and large, I think that people vote on the issues that, that are the most important to them, and that includes women. You know, you were put into the limelight at the Democratic National Convention, and some people thought that actually launched your governor career, your campaign for governor. And you've been criticized for what you said about the president, now the president of the United States. I'm wondering if the Democratic Convention were held today, would you yeah. make that same speech? Oh, yeah. Sure. Have I had a great right? time. I thought it was real important. You know, we've become so deadly serious about our politics. Uh, it's, it's hard for anyone to even laugh anymore. It's really hard for a lot of candidates to even make jokes because the next thing you know, you know, it's going to be front page news. 
And so I think everyone's become terribly staid and terribly cautious and terribly serious. And I wanted that speech to say that this is fun, politics is a great thing, and I think we accomplished that. Yeah, you also accomplished, you know, tearing down the Vice President of the United States, which, which you think was well, okay. I really thought it was more like a political cartoon. I didn't think there was anything uh, that was malicious or mean, nothing t tore him down. Uh, I, in fact, I had a really nice handwritten note from him. Uh, after the election, I'd sent him a congratulatory wire. Uh, the problem is that if you start taking these politics and these campaigns seriously and personally, you begin to take all this stuff personally that they say and do about you, well, then you're not going to have anyone left who's even willing to get into politics. We've got to be able to laugh at ourselves. Well, I'm going to hope that the voters will take it seriously. Thank you very much for being here. That's all the time we have for right now.